Hello everybody, this is David again with another Verilog video on the Basis 3 FPGA. Uh, this time I'm going to make a 7 segment display clock. So I'm just going to take the 100 megahertz clock from the Basis 3 and it'll drive a 7 segment display clock. I'm also going to use three of these buttons here. The center will be a reset. This one will be to set the hours by incrementing. This one over here will be to set the minutes by incrementing. Now, um, I did a binary clock before where I had uh, four um, bits uh, for the hours um, from the Pima driving on a, on a breadboard and six bits for the minutes on a breadboard and then one blinking LED. Well, I'm going to take that entire circuitry and then just wrap it and <clears throat> in another top module and then include a couple other modules to make the seven, um, seven, seven segment display clock. But the, the binary clock that I created before is the core of this clock. So let me take you over to the code. All right, here I am in Vivado. You can see the module hierarchy right here. So this one here is the, the top for the binary clock. So this is all the modules itself just for driving a binary clock. So I'm going to instantiate that module inside of another module. And I'm also gonna, so I'm gonna take the hours and the minutes that come from here and convert it to BCD using binary to BCD converters, and then send those values into a seven segment display control um, that will control the, the segments. All right, let me go through each of the modules really quickly. Here's the button to bouncer, same one I've used before. Got the clock in, uh, button signal in, button out, three temporary registers to ripple the button in signal to, and then that third register is what the button out value will be. <clears throat> I need a one hertz generator. So this is where we take the signal, the 100 megahertz signal from the basis three, convert it to a one hertz signal. You need a, a, a counter that is big enough to hold this value, which is half of the incoming value. So 26 bits. And then we have that register that we toggle to create the one hertz signal effect. Down here's the logic. So it, the always at the positive edge of this 100 megahertz clock, the counter reg is gonna continue counting, incrementing. Um, and until it gets to this number, which is basically half of the 100 megahertz, then it's going to reset and then it's going to toggle this output register. And then that's the output register is going to be tied into this output wire of the clock. One hertz will be the signal. Now that one hertz generator will feed the seconds counter. So this is just a counter for the seconds. Um, so it has the one hertz signal coming in and then it increments minutes going out. So uh, we need six bits to count up to 59 for the seconds. They count from zero to 59. So every clock one hertz a reset. If it's reset, we'll reset the counter. Otherwise, it's going to keep counting until it gets to 59 and it gets reset to zero. Down here, that increments, increment minutes signal, I'll use a conditional operator statement here. Um, basically a multiplexer. So it, when set counter is equal to 59, we'll set it to one. And then when it goes back to zero, it'll, the, the increment minutes signal will go down to zero. And so we're creating a neg edge. And then in the minutes, that's exactly what it's looking for. It's looking for a neg edge on that signal in order to increment the minutes. So we have the increment minute signal coming from the seconds, and then we have an increment hour signal going out to do the same thing. So seconds, increments, minutes, min minutes, increments, hours. And then we have the actual minutes itself, the six bits th that are the binary minutes itself will be coming out of this module. Uh, same thing as seconds, we need a six bit counter to count from zero to 59. Same logic here for the counter, except it will increment on a neg edge increment minutes. And then increment hours, same type of deal from the seconds. We'll have whenever the minutes counter is 59, it'll go to one. And then when it goes to zero, we'll have a neg edge as it goes to zero. And then the hours will pick up the neg edge. Um, the minutes are, are actually the minutes counter itself is coming as the output of the minutes. 
So here's the hours. We have that increment hour signal coming in from the minutes. Every neg edge, it will increment and we'll just have, we'll control the hours counter to go from one to 12. So we only need four bits for the hours. And then that hour signal will be outputted, which is the value of the hours counter. Now, and then, so this is the top for the binary clock part. So you could work a binary clock with this, all the stuff I just went through here. So I'm going to actually use this as the core, like I said. So this is just tying in all the, the button debouncers for the reset, the increment hours, increment minutes, the one hertz generator, the seconds, minutes, and hours module. And then a bunch of wires are created. Um, I use some OR gates so that the signal coming from seconds that takes minutes um, can be ORed with the uh, button signal. So you can increment the minutes so the seconds module can increment the minutes and so can the buttons. And same thing for the hours. The minutes will increment the hours, but then there's also a button that can increment hours. That's the reason for these ORs right here. And then we're going to have this one hertz signal, which is going to be the blinking LED just tied into the uh, one hertz signal. Now for the seven segment display clock, we need the binary to um, BCD converter. And so um, I just create that here. It's going to be, it's six bits because the minutes is six bits. And then what I'll do, I'll show you in the top where I can catenate two more bits attached to the hours. So it could be the same bit width, but this is a, a bin to BCD I've used before. So the tens ends up being the binary in value divided by 10 because you'll get, um, <clears throat> like, let's say it's 59, you'll get five. The nine is thrown away, but you right here in the ones, you use the modulus by 10 and then that's how you can capture the nine. So tens becomes five and ones becomes nine and you've effectively broken out your, your decimal value or your binary value into two uh, binary coded decimal values to use for this in the seven segment uh, control. So let me just show you, here's the top uh, module and that right here is what I was talking about. So um, hours is only a four bit value and minutes is a six bit value. So in order to make it the same bit width and use the same bin to BCD module without creating a different one, I just concatenate two zeros um, to the hours vector. Okay, now seven segment control. So we have the clock 100 megahertz coming in. So these are these four values here are the ones coming from the binary to BCD converter. We have the, the BCD value for the tens, value for the hours, the ones, the tens values for the minutes, and then the ones value for the minutes. And then the outputs that will drive the seven segment displays. We have the seven segments and then the four anodes. And right here, I just create some parameters that I can use for assigning um, values to the segments down below instead of having to keep typing out all this seven bits of whatnot I just use these parameter names um, from here down to here is where all this is for anode control so there's an anode select register and an anode timer so I have enough bits for the anode timer to count to basically 100k reset and then increment the anode select and then there's only four anodes so we need two bits and it wraps around so it'll continue just selecting the next anode and right here is where we set the value of the anode register on the output here's an by the anode select so the four bits represents turning on in um turning on one and one segment at a time one seven segment display and you do that with a zero and for the basis three so this will keep going and it will toggle, it'll switch through each anode in turn so fast so that it looks like they're all on at the same time and we get the clock. Now this is how we drive the segments down here. Um, in the case of the anode select, we're going to have, we could also use anode as well, but I just, in the four bits here, these are essentially the same. So I just use the anode select value for each one of these cases. And, and so this is the... Uh, hours tens digit and so if that binary value of hours tens that comes in then we will <clears throat> if it's zero we're going to set it to null because i don't want the clock to show like zero three or zero five so i'm just going to turn the zero off if any of the hours is less than 10 
and then if it's a one we'll, we'll display a one for 10 11 and 12. here's the hours ones digit just a case for the hours ones the the four bit value coming in from the bcd and we'll set the segment to the corresponding value of the parameter um, same thing here for the minutes tens it'll only be zero through five so we'll have those here and then the minutes one can be zero through nine and that is it i'll take you to the top clock here's where i instantiate the binary clock the core right there and then here's the new modules the bin to bcd for hours the bin to bcd for minutes the seven segment control and then they're just all tied in together with wires uh, here's the constraints file we have the clock signal of clock 100 megahertz we're going to use one led for the blink um, here's the seven segments the seg right here the anodes here and then the three buttons for reset increment hours and increment minutes um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and program the board and then I'll show you it working okay so the board has been programmed and here's the clock it just started up here's the blinking LED for the seconds now you can't really see it but in between the two and the zero there's a colon like most clocks have for the seven segment display but checking the xdc file and then digging around some more i found out you cannot um attach a signal to that which is which kind of sucks it would be cool if you could because you could drive this blinking signal to the colon in the middle and make it look more like a clock but anyway this is the clock right here so we'll reset it we start at 12. I'm going to press the button here, increment hours, skips over a couple just because it's on the release. So you have to push and release real quick, but you can see it's incrementing. And then here's the minutes over here. Uh, yeah, which is the only thing you need to make sure is that when you, that uh, seconds increments minutes and that make minutes increments hours. Um, all of the hour values are good so there we have our seconds so when we get to 259 um, it should switch to three o'clock so we'll just make sure that works yeah I really wish that colon in the middle of there would work that would look really cool. I don't know why they didn't make that work. I mean, you can make a clock. You can make it look like an actual clock. But the blinking green light, it does the job. Like, you, when you see that blinking, there you go. It just changed to 3 o'clock. So, there it is working. A seven-segment display clock on the basis 3 using a previous binary clock module. Thanks for watching.